So I was going to see my buddy Brian Brushwood over at Modern Rogue, and he wanted to challenge a myth, a myth you definitely have heard of in the radio community. Uh, you ever hear that one about that uh, famous actress who had a molar filling and she could hear CIA radio contacts? Well, link's in the video description if you want to go check out what we talk about uh, over on the Modern Rogue's channel. But I needed something that kind of acted like that favorite myth that we're all familiar with. And I thought a perfect example of something like that would be a trench radio from like, you know, World War One, World War Two, made with, you know, a, a blackened carbon razor blade and a, and a pencil. And you would kind of use that as a stylus to poke around or a crystal radio. Now, if you're not familiar with a crystal radio, it's an incredibly simple radio design. It is an inductor and it is a rectifier, which in this case is like a Galena piece of crystal and what's called a cat whisker. And in the beginning of radio listening, as a hobby or as an information gathering tool, people would use a cat whisker detector to poke around and find uh, signals. It would basically take the carrier out of the AM signal. This only works with amplitude modulated radio. It would just give you the transmitted side loads or the parts you wanted to hear, the actual voices or music or whatever it was. Crystal detectors were pretty good at that. As a fun read, I'm linking a Wikipedia article that talks about the crystal detector and kind of how it works. It's a really interesting piece of history where they discovered the ability to use decimeral metals as like a semiconductor. And in this case, uh, that's exactly what's going on here. We're creating almost like a rectifier in that it's taking the AM signal, which is AC, and creating DC pulses out of it. So this is a non-amplified audio signal. So literally how close and how intense the RF hits your antenna is going to change the volume, basically. And so I thought I would build one. But where does one start when you want to build a crystal radio, particularly one that would be authentic with some actual Galena crystal? And I found this website, United Nuclear. <laughs> And it's no joke. Obviously, you can see uh, high quality crystal radio kits, but I just wanted to like let this roll for a second. You can buy mercury. Sure. High voltage power supplies. Absolutely. Radioactive fiesta wear <laughs> on everybody's Christmas list for sure. And of course, uranium ore. This website's awesome. <laughs> I'm on, you're all on a list if you go to this website. But under their crystal radio high quality kits, they have a couple of different options. And yeah, this isn't that cheap. The ultimate kit, which is the one I bought, was $100. And they have a standard kit. The standard kit has a germanium diode instead of a piece of galena. The, uh, the standard radio kit's fine if you want to use the diode. In fact, the, the complete kit, the ultimate kit, comes with both the diode and the little specimen of Galena. And then there's an antenna kit because you generally want a really long antenna wire. A crystal earphone, which is really important. So if you want to build a crystal radio... A crystal earpiece is one of the most important parts, and if I think I understand this correctly, it's a, it's a high impedance earpiece, and it's a part of the circuit, which I'm now overlaying on the screen so you can get an idea of how simple this radio design is. But yeah, majorly important part of this whole thing. They even have crystal headphones. I didn't even know that was a thing. But uh, yeah, there you go. If you really want to get into this, they got $60 headphones that you can use for that. They got pre-assembled coils. Now, the coil is important because that is basically the inductor, and those amount of coils is matching towards the AM broadcasting band space. So you do have to get something that's relatively tuned within the frequency that you're going to be listening to, the AM broadcast space. So think 640 kilohertz, for instance, which is a local AM station. That's about six miles from my house. Ah, I stand corrected. Traditional uh, crystal radios used Galena. This one is germanium. I think that's correct. So I, I apologize on that. Let's see. Does it actually have, does it call out Galena or germanium here? Ah, germanium. Okay. So yeah, it, it has germanium. Sorry about that. Now, for those of you who are still watching, because I'm literally talking about a crystal radio, super old technology, I found the kit really fun to build. It's a great kit for kids. If you are going to supervise them, it's probably going to be even easier. And it's pretty magical, because once they get it up and running, it's literally powered by the AM stations that they're hearing. That transmitted power is what's literally what you're hearing. There's no internal power supply. And if you explain that to the kids, I think they'll really get a kick out of it. The build was really, really easy. I sanded the base with the included sandpaper and used the provided stain. And the stain 
looks really good. I will go ahead and just say that the instructions are fully laid out in directly the order you need to do them in. I skipped the first page and went straight to sanding and, and staining. I don't know why. I ended up having to go back and solder on the wires for the variable capacitor. You should definitely follow this directly because you want to do all that soldering before you install the variable capacitor into the base. The base needs to be stained before you do all that. So it's going to take you about two days. So I would say that you still probably want to do the staining, sanding, and all that stuff first, but then just know the final assembly is going to have to happen after the stain is fully cured and the polyurethane is cured. Speaking of the polyurethane, there's a PVC tube, at least it's acrylic or it's PVC, but there's a nice shiny tube that this comes with that you wrap the wires around, and there are pre-drilled holes for sliding the wire into for where you will add the taps on the end. And it just so happens that the space between those holes and the width of the wire is exactly the amount of turns if they're butted right up against each other that you need for the particular tuning that you want to be able to hear the AM stations. There's a provided brush that is included for applying this, the polyurethane to the inductor. You would use just some kind of a rag or a paper towel to apply the stain. Make sure you go in the direction of the wood grain as called out in the instructions. And as far as the bits that go into the kit, they're all nicely organized in different segmented sections of a plastic bag, which I found was great. And again, another really handy thing if you have kids working on this, you're only opening one portion at a time and then working through those pieces. Assembly was a piece of cake. The only thing that I would probably recommend is that you have a good knowledge of how to crimp a terminal spade connector. If you have a proper crimper, it's going to make things a lot easier. I did have to screw the, the bolts into the base. The, the, the hole was exactly the same size as the diameter of the screw, so I did have to work on that a little bit. If you wanted to use, say, a power drill or a impact driver, that probably worked just fine. I was worried though, given that these were slotted screws that I might slip off and damage the wood. So I went ahead and just used a hand screwdriver. It took a little bit longer, but I had less risk of flying off the end of it. The brass fixtures, wires, hand screws are all really nice. They look good on the final product. And the cat whisker setup I think is, is really neat as well. Again, explaining to the kids how these things work is really fun when they get to hear it too. So if you get to poke around or let them poke around once they get the idea to find where the noise all of a sudden comes up and they can start to hear stations, that's a really fun learning e experience. You will need to solder the base that the germanium mineral sample sits on. That's the only part other than the variable capacitor soldering the leads onto the two legs that you'll have to kind of play around with. And they've already gone through the process of snipping the other leg, so you know exactly what to do. It's, again, a very simple radio to build. The kit comes with a cat whisker diode little poker bit that goes into the germanium. I found it actually pretty easy when I had the earpiece in to kind of tune around and find where the noise came up. It's kind of how you'd, you'd figure it out. You radio guys are going to have no problem with this. But yeah, that's exactly what it looks like. It's a wood base. It comes with the stain. And in fact, I should mention that it's actually broken up into three different options. The Craftsman kit, which is the one I got, which requires sanding the base, staining it, and then uh, actually rolling the inductor and then adding polyurethane to that inductor so that it kind of holds everything in place. Now, normally this is where I would cut to some kind of an audio sample of like the type of quality we get, but you can't really hear it uh, when you don't have it in your ear. I'll do my best to record it, but in the meantime, Here's a video sample of Brian Brushwood hearing some radio signals on the Crystal Radio. Brian, do you hear the signals? Yes. Apparently the signals are East Texan. <laughs> <laughs> and we got the wire going all the way up to that pole and then another 30 or so feet in that direction. So. I wonder, I wonder if, if we can hold it up to the mic on, on the phone. Oh my gosh, good. Maybe. Where is the mic on the... I don't know where yeah, they are. I don't the... know either. Here. We'll just kind of... Let me aim at this and see if we can drag it up here and I'll see if I can find a spot. <laughs> the whole world got very quiet for us. <laughs> so here, crazy. That's, no, that's amazing, dude. That's... <laughs> We had to swap out the germanium uh, traditional mineral for the diode. It's a little bit louder with the diode.
All in all, I found this to be a really fun little project. I would recommend you try this with some younger folks and kind of show them what is going on and actually work through the process. It makes a fun little curiosity too if you put it on a table or a mantelpiece or whatnot. And I have not had a lot of experience with these, nor have I built a lot of these. So the performance of this is based off of this one and only unit that I have. And unfortunately, since I can't really give you an audio clip, you're going to have to take my word that uh, you can take from me that it looks pretty cool because you can see that yourself. But anyway, wanted to get the word out because I think this is kind of fun. Short video for today. Thanks so much for watching, guys. Leave your comments below. I'd love to hear them. Love to read them. I'm Josh, KI6NAZ73.